Hi everyone, so I thought today I'd do a quick tutorial on how to set up a static website hosting on Amazon Web Services using their S3 bucket. So the S3 bucket, if you haven't used it in the past, is highly scalable, extremely cheap um, storage service. So you can use it to store data, but you could also use it to host static websites. So it's a great solution if you don't need to have any forms or any input from users and you just wanna provide information, S3 is really cost effective and highly scalable, meaning it doesn't matter if 10 people visit your website or 10,000 people, it would automatically scale to meet the need and demand of your site. So you really can't beat that. It's a really easy solution. So let's go ahead and take a look. The first thing you really need to do is create an AWS account. If you haven't had one in the past, then you get tons of stuff for free the first year, including five gigs of free S3 storage. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into my uh, AWS account here. And um, you can do this a few different ways where you um, log in. I'm logging in with my root account. Technically, if you this is a company, then you probably wanna have user accounts. And that's when you use the, their identity management system, you create users with roles. Maybe I'll do a video on that later. But I'm gonna go ahead and log in with my root user. Again, you might, if this is a company with a few employees, you might wanna use, create a, a user that's not the root um, AWS user. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. And if you haven't used AWS services before, there are literally hundreds of services they offer. Anything from DNS to computing, um, to serverless, to cloud formation, like DevOps, so tons of stuff. So I'm gonna click on the S3 service. An S3 service considered a global service so in the sense that um, it's not, you don't have to select a region. So you're gonna name your bucket, which is gonna consider it as your web folder. And this should be identical to the name of your domain. So if your domain name, in my case, is gonna be sysadmingirl.com, my bucket needs to be called sysadmingirl.com. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create my um, domain bucket, right? They need to be identical. Don't worry about the region. Um, well, yeah, I mean, go ahead and create the set the region to wherever part of the world you're in, but the domain name or the bucket name has to be unique worldwide. So if someone else has the same bucket name, you'll get flagged here. And we're gonna go ahead next. So the S3 bucket can be used for many different things, including storing data. So when I hit next here, I'm gonna get a lot of options about version control, tagging, um, access control, encryption, because S3 can be used um, for storing data for either short-term or long-term cheap data storage. So it has a lot of version and control permissions for that. The next thing it's going to say, I'm the only person who have any sort of read, write, execute on this. And that's what I want. And then you get a summary. We can go ahead and create our bucket. Really, really easy. So now that we have our bucket created, I'm going to want to change the permissions. And I'm going to go ahead and click on um, properties. And I'm going to set, first thing I want to set is say, use this for a static website. So it has static website hosting, my default main page, index.html, pretty common. You see that in a lot of web servers. And now we're gonna set our permissions and we wanna make it publicly accessible. So I'm gonna dump in this little bit of JSON code here and I'll put this in the comments and you only need to change one line. So I'm on the AWS documentation. I'm gonna copy it from there. And it's just pretty much saying that this object my bucket object is publicly accessible. All right, so that version line saying what version of uh, policy, and it's gonna say which SID, publicly read, get object, allow, everything in my bucket name. And you notice that I'm just changing the resource line. You do get a warning message when you do this to make it very um, noticeable that this is public to the world. So again, you wanna be careful with that. There's actually a security vulnerability when someone actually did this with passwords stored in their bucket. So again, make sure if you're making something publicly accessible that it's not sensitive data. Uh, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna upload our website. So you just have to make sure you have that main page, your index.html uploaded. So I'm gonna add some files here. You click on add there, you can just drag them in. So here's my website, I have my index, I got some CSS, some images. I'm gonna hit next. And once it's uploaded, 
um, my website is being hosted. Now, it is going to be hosted with kind of um, a AWS URL, right? So I haven't registered my domain name yet. So we're going to do that next. So right now, this is my URL. So that is just the reference URL to my S3 object. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a bucket and this is going to be used for a redirect. So a lot of people put type in www.thedomainname.com. So in this case, we're going to do this and we're going to set up a redirect to the other bucket, the ssalmongirl.com bucket. All right, this is just going to say, if anyone goes to www.sysadmingirl.com, forward that, right? So we're going through the same step, static web hosting, but now I'm putting in a redirect. And I'm going to type in my bucket name, sysadmingirl.com, that has the actual website stored in it. So I'm going to go ahead and type in HTT. You, you could also put HTTPS for encrypted redirect to an encrypted site. And again, I'm going to go over and do my permissions again. So if you go in there, it says not public. So I'm going to click on permissions and then my bucket policy. And again, it's the same thing I did before. The JSON code that's saying I'm making this AWS object, S3 object, publicly accessible. And I'm just changing that resource line to point to my new bucket to make it publicly accessible. So now we have our two buckets created, our main bucket with actually the web files, and then our second bucket, which is a redirect to our main bucket with the web content. Now I'm gonna go move over to use the other service, the root 53 service. That's kind of off the route 66, you know, on the US highway. So it's kind of a spin off that. So and 53 is the port for DNS. So that's where the naming comes from. So I'm gonna choose sysadmingirl.com, pretty sure it's free, yeah, checking. And yeah, it's free, I'm gonna add it to my cart, I'm gonna pay for it. So it's just $12, this is really cheap, it doesn't cost too much. So, and it takes just a few minutes to purchase this, you know, register it, so you can put in all your personal, first name, last name. And if you scroll to the bottom, it has a um, hide your, you know, personal information feature. So you go ahead and select that. And once you're done with that, um, you're gonna go in and create a few DNS records. And they're gonna be aliases that are pointing to that long AWS URL we saw before, right? Which had the sysadmin girl, had like the West, US, AWS service, S3, that long AWS URL. So we got our one DNS management with one hosted zone. So here's our domain. And now we're gonna create a record. And over on the left, on the right here, I'm going to leave it uh, blank. So I believe it's called a naked record. So I'm, if anyone just types in sysadmingirl.com, that should be able to resolve to something. So that's what I'm going to say here. I want to resolve, and I'm going to select an alias. Um, there are some options here, some advanced uh, DNS options, if you're looking for something more advanced. But I'm just going to select alias. I'm going to select an alias target. If you did your bucket naming correctly, then it will appear. See right there is our S3 bucket. So this is the first one we created. So we'll go ahead and create this zone. And now we're gonna do the similar thing and create a second record for www.sysadmingirl.com and we're gonna point it to the second bucket we created that is a redirect to our first bucket. So I know it sounds a little confusing, but it's all gonna work at the end. So that's found our second bucket URL right there. And that's it, we wait a few minutes. And within a few minutes, we're able to go to sysadmingirl.com and check out my not so hot website. <laughs> I need to work on that. All right, there it is, sysadmingirl.com. Right, and that's all there is to it. Thanks for listening, guys. Have a great one, bye.